put it in your hand and throw it on your sister. Oh, salvaged it. This old demon right here. Oh, 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 oh. Just went with that red, man. I want to change it up, you know. Water's getting more color. I mean, spotted bass like red. They like chartreuse, but I think they like it because they can see it, you know. And I'm really like, honestly, if I'm cold water cranking like this, I got to, I started out this morning with a 10 and a six. I had a number six shad raft. I got a wiggle wart and I'm just messing around, moving around, moving around. But I'm really fighting the fact that the water's so high, I can't reach the bottom, like close to the bank where I need to be fishing. So you can see just limb after limb, you're trying to work around. It's not going to be as easy just to get the bait down and catch them as what I wanted it to be. It can be done, but I'm going to most definitely step up and stay on this demon color and that hot mustard, brighter look. A lot of fresh mud coming in and rainwater, so I'm not scared to keep trying it a little bit. There he is. Starting to grow up a little bit. Look at him off that shelf right there. I think there ain't a few there. Breaks off right to us, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to hit some of that right there. You have to get the bait down there to where they're at to get these fish to react. The water's cold, so they're not running a long way to get it. But if you can get it down there where they're at, you're subject to catch a bass. There's one right there. Not a giant, but once again, we're prevailing on that DT-10. We're getting the bait in the depth that they want, and we're getting action. You know, and on a lot of this cast right here, I'm not on the bottom, you know. It's not like I'm, I'm bumping structure the whole way. So I may have to throw way out there, throw halfway over the target I want to hit, and reel and reel and get the bait down to it. Once you bump it, kind of let off the reel and let it just slow wind it back in. The fish will generally let you let you know when you get the bait down there. They will bite it. See what I'm trying to do? I just, I know from being up here that what's on this bank. So we're sitting an eight or nine foot looking in front of it. It's just solid boulders and they're clean on top. So I'm trying to just, just trying to touch them and see if there's fish sit on them. You get up around them trees, there's just so much of it in the water right now. Coming up so fast, they didn't all go with it. Even though I know basically what's here, I, you still watch me. I've probably fished down this bank no less than a hundred times <laughs> from when I was a kid to now. But I still stare at the graph all the way down it like I've never fished down it because you just never know when you're gonna learn something, see a new rock out there, paying attention to where a place may stick out a little bit in this high water, somewhere I may can just touch the bottom a little extra. I change the position of my cast a little closer to the structure. I mean, you. If you don't have 360 and you don't have side imaging, down imaging, just use your eyes on a lake like this. If you look up there and you see a stretch of just big boulders that run down toward the lake, common sense says there's a really good chance there's gonna be boulders out there in the water. So just look around at that, go crank in front of it. You know, you look up there and see it, and you like, okay, there's boulders on the bank, and you start making casts for this crankbait, just kind of let that crankbait tell you what's there. Just reel it, make you two or three casts off the bank. When you feel that build that crankbait start hitting stuff, you're just like, okay. I mean, it's, it's an indicator for you. And when it's the only indicator you got, you really need to pay attention. It's a lot more to it than just throwing a wine. And you're really trying to feel every cast, what could be out there, how much more rock. And when I hit rock, I like to throw, just keep throwing out. If I throw in right off the bank and I hit rock, then I'll throw out a little further and see if I can hit rock. I throw out a little further and see if I can hit it. I'll keep kind of slicing it in the pie till I get to where I can't hit rock anymore, then I'll move on down the bank. So just keep cranking them up, keep your head down and grinding. We got us the cold, cold wind on us. Hardest thing to do when cold water cranking, to me, is fishing the elements. I'm guilty of it. You know, your hands are cold, your feet are cold. But if you're on a clear water, a normal clear water reservoir where the fish really, really like the wind blowing on them, bad as I hate to say it, sometimes you just gotta get cold and get out there in it. And you can avoid it, but I mean, we're in the wind and they started biting. So bad as it sucks, put your helmet on buttercup and get in there. A lot of people know me and they know I like to jig fish and I do this and that. But let me tell you, when it comes to like cold water fishing, man, my top five baits is gonna be hard baits. It's gonna be moving baits, you know. I go to somewhere and the water's still cold. I'm gonna start out with my confidence baits, hard baits in cold water. I'm gonna try to cover a little water without fishing too fast just to get bites to try to see if I can figure out anything going. So to me, cold water fishing doesn't mean 
don't move down the bank. It just means you got to kind of control the speed of the bait. But I'm most definitely going to tie me on about five crankbaits and I'm going to ease down the bank fishing. And like today, like today, when I come up here, I didn't anticipate the water being seven foot over full pool. So I didn't have a DT-10 tied on. I couldn't touch the bottom, but I know they'll bite a hard bait. So I go back, tie DT-10 on, and it seems to be what's working best that I can actually get down in the depth that the fish are at, get a few bites. Just gotta make adjustments.